once again, actor extraordinaire Christian Barley here to talk to you uh, on my second um, YouTube channel presentation. As promised, I'm going to be here to review The Batman, which is a screen sensation, uh, 2022. It's the biggest movie of 2022. And the only thing in comparison uh, to the likes, I guess would you could have said James Bond with Daniel Craig uh, had come out. Uh, they waited two years to release that. And they even waited a little bit of time to release this movie, The Batman, which has been in the works for a long time. Very much reminiscent of Batman from the comic books year one, which was a great comic book. And I'm not sure if Frank Miller did that or not, uh, but he did do a lot of those late 80 uh, comic books, uh, which um, were fantastic. Uh, 300 and some other ones, but reimagining of Batman a little bit, pretty much back to its roots and just taking Batman and doing some new comic books on him, putting them in more in a, no, in a novel form, uh, but they were just still a comic book. Um, but again, I think Frank Miller had a lot to do with that year one, and then of course, uh, uh, The Dark Knight Rises, which of course Christopher Nolan uh, did fantastic, got to work with again with this year uh, with uh, none other than probably the best cinematic Batman to date, uh, Christian Bale. I got to work with him on David O. Russell's film, which I spoke about last time, and that should be up for hopefully some Oscar nominations. Him and Rob Margie, uh, who also um, uh, played Holly Quinn, so there's a nice Batman connection there already. And of course, then I got to work with Todd Phillips, and that was three years ago, and with Joaquin Phoenix, who played the Joker. Uh, and was nominated and won the Academy Award, which rightly so, I think he deserved it, for also a reimagining of the Joker, very much reminiscent of Heath Ledger from the Dark Knight uh, movies, which uh, three of them, which were, uh, again, Christian Bale stayed in all those movies as the Dark Knight. I think he did a fantastic job, of course, with an all-star cast, uh, great consummate actors, Michael Caine playing Alfred. They always seem to get Alfred right in all of these Batman movies, no matter how good the Batman movies are. Some better than others, but they always seem to get it right. Uh, the Alfreds, the one character they always get right. And in the, of course, in the new Batman, which I'll talk about in a second, uh, they got that right, of course, again, once again. But every time, they always seem to get Alfred uh, right. But, of course, Morgan Freeman playing in the, uh, the Christian Bale and Christopher Nolan versions. Uh, Rutger Howe, the late Rutger Howe, a fantastic uh, job there as well. And Morgan Freeman, again, once again, playing Fox and Alfred played by none other than Michael Caine, of course, Richard Bale. And the villains were always great there because uh, Liam Neeson got to play, uh, was going under a different name during the thing, but inevitably was, was Ra's Ghoul, which is very interesting in the comic books, too, because and in the animated series, which they definitely got right. Marvel always seemed to hit it a little better as lately. At least in the pocketbook, did better at the movies, uh, the Marvel ones. They're kind of cookie-cutter, but a lot of them are, are quite good. Some I enjoy more than others. Uh, but they did better at the box office with, of course, Endgame being perhaps the biggest movie of all time. Not adjusted maybe to inflation or whatever in the numbers, but it broke two and a half billion. I think it was the biggest movie of all time on modern standards. So they, they hit it right. And DC has always been the benchmark, but uh, Batman or Superman, any one of them, and now Wonder Woman and Aquaman, which they've done very well with too. But they're not quite hitting it quite as big as the Marvel but they're getting there again, and and in this case, uh, back to the Batman, which is just was a fantastic movie from beginning to end, and very much reminiscent again of Batman Year One from the comic books or the animated series. And again, when you go back to the animated series, which were done by Warner Brothers, somewhat thankful to Steven Spielberg, who started. I think he was doing the anim anima animes or something like that, and he wanted to do some uh, some animation uh, for the for the screen. And television, and then the Warner Brothers opened up a uh, animation department, which they hadn't had really. It was a, gr a great story, and of course they did Batman the animated series, which is probably one of the greatest animated series, definitely the, maybe the best take on Batman. And uh, my buddy there who plays Batman in there, and of course uh, in there, had done it for so many years. I'm forgetting his name, but you know who he is, and he's actually did it for like 25 years. The voice of Batman in those, I'll remember his name in a little while. Uh, did a fantastic job on those Batman the Animated Series. And just like the original Adam West Batman, they brought so many famous actors in to play the villains. Even, even Roddy McDowell, who was the bookworm, actually came in to play 
I believe he came in to play Scarecrow, I believe, or the Mad Hatter. It might have been the Mad Hatter, but really great. And, of course, Mark Hamill came in to do the Joker, which may have been one of the finest versions of the Joker, and has gotten to do that in several animated movies um, with my buddy uh, who plays the Batman, the voice over in the animated series and in several Warner Brothers series, but they're fantastic. So this movie, The Batman, directed by M Matt Reeves, and... Uh, uh, none other than uh, Robert Pattinson. They were going for a little bit younger of a Batman, obviously. I think he did a fantastic job. I thought it was a good choice. He's a good actor, Robert Pattinson, and he has a good enough look. He could play that uh, that Batman character, and he did a very good, very good job. And he didn't play so much the suave Batman. He played more the deep, reserved, a lot of inner conflict. I'll be honest with you, not to brag or anything, but I would want to work it that way, too. I would think that was a wise choice. Now, playing the suave a Batman is definitely great. The Bruce Wayne and everything like that, he, he did that fine, too. But that's sort of a different take on certain things. Um, I think Christian Bale also did that very well, too. And Val Kilmer, ironically, did a pretty good job as Batman, even though he didn't look it because he had more of the blonde hair. And again, if we go back to Michael Heaton, did not do a bad job because he wasn't expected to do such a good job. It was kind of... Michael Keaton's a great, a very, uh, I'd say a very good actor. Maybe we could even say a great actor, but he's done some great work. Um, we'll talk about him in a bit, too, but but we will just focus on the Batman. So, again, please like and subscribe to my channel here. Uh, Christian Barley, please like and subscribe again, and I really appreciate all the people uh, viewing this and, and listening to it. So, about the Batman, we have, I'll read for lack of a better term, if I need to look at my notes, uh, Colin Farrell, which was just a brilliant choice. Always oh, just such a great actor. I love him. Uh, I've loved uh, Colin Farrell for a long time. He played the Penguin. They put him, they donned him up in some makeup, and he plays it really very gangster-like. It was a perfect choice. He did a great job. A lot of comedy there, but great straight-up gangster stuff, great stuff. And then Paul Dano uh, from There Will Be Blood, who was went toe-to-toe -to -toe with none other than my buddy uh, Daniel Day-Lewis, one of the greatest actors of all time, and did a fine job in that he gets to play the Riddler at reimagining of that very... Uh, under the mass, very violent, um, but you get to, you'll get to see it. Very neo-noir, heavy duty, heavy handed. But when you as you watch the story unfold, you see that everything is not as it appears. Very much reminiscent to real life. People that claim to be good and are not so good. You know those that love to tell everybody how good and wonderful they are uh, are not always so good as they appear to be. And there's a lot of that going on, and a lot of questions set in this movie. And we have, of course, um, my buddy Andrew, Andrew Circus, Andrew Circus, who, of course, did the Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit. He's been in the Marvel movies. He played um, uh, the guy with who gets his arm done, and he was in the um, what's the great movie with um, the late great uh, the pa the Black Panther, uh, Bosman, who just uh, passed away. Who did, ended up doing a fantastic job to that part sadly passed away and Andy Serkis was in that playing one of the villains and that and of course we all know him as Gollum from the Lord of the Rings series and from the Hobbit uh, and he does a fine job playing Alfred the Butler once again the casting it as Alfred the Butler has always been right Jeremy Irons came in and filled it when Ben Affleck was playing the part so they always got the casting of Alfred and even back to Michael Keaton and uh, Val Kilmer days and even when George Clooney God bless him, stepped into that part, and I think he even laughed at what was going on there. I think the only thing good about that movie, The Batman and Robin, was actually was Mr. Freeze. Uh, he, he can't really pick on Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think he came in and did the job that you were expected of him, but other than that, those movies were pretty bad. Um, but, and uh, Jim Carrey, which the movie before that, did a pretty good job as the Riddler, as expected. But this new reimagining of the Riddler was fantastic. And much more hard edge there. There is some comedy here, and Zoe Kravitz, a uh, connection there to Aquaman, and I think uh, her mother, uh, Le father Lenny Kravitz, and um, Aquaman's, uh, I'm going to forget her, her, his wife's name, um, but a very famous actress. Lisa Bonet, was it Lisa Bonet, I believe? I think that's their, uh, Lenny Kravitz and Lisa Bonet, I believe that's their daughter, Zoe Kravitz, to the best of my knowledge. But she did a very good job as a spunky, um, kind of hard-edged um, Catwoman, and she does a great job there. Uh, and it's really got a nice twist. So I don't want to give away all the details here, but I may give a little bit, spoilers, give a little bit away, but she's very connected to Mr. Falcone, who was played by Tom Wilkinson, 
in the Christian Bale versions and the Christopher Nolan versions, brilliantly played by him. And this one, it's played, of course, I always forget his name, and he's a very good actor. And it's John Turturro. I, I, had, I had to look down, and I always forget his name, but I certainly know John Turturro. And he just... Heavy duty, great acting, a lot of great scenes with him and and uh, the Penguin who are working together as gangsters. But it's just some really heavy duty, dark comedy in there. Maybe some people wouldn't consider it that, but I did when he's dealing and taking on the Catwoman later on in the movie. It's just it's some really funny... I thought they were funny scenes. They were a little violent, but they were pretty funny. Some of the stuff that was going on in there, some of his wording, it was pretty... But they, they hit the gangster note pretty well in here. And we're able to tap into all those, uh, just such an array of villains. As we know, Batman has the best villains. You know, Superman, some great villains, a Fantastic Four, obviously. But Batman has the best. They just pound for pound. Spider-Man has some good ones, too, and Marvel has some excellent villains. But there's nothing like the old DC Batman and Superman villains. They're just fantastic. And we even get to see a footnote of the Joker, uh, a different version, just at an Arkham scene. For, for whatever it was worth. It was still nice to have that element. I don't even know if the guy played it so well or not. That was irrelevant. He, he did an okay job. But you kind of get a glimpse of the Joker there. Um, but again, that's played by Joaquin Phoenix. It should be. I, there may be a little diff different universe, but I got to work on with Joaquin Phoenix, again, as we said, who won the Academy Award, who did very much like a Heath Ledger, brilliantly, like Heath Ledger, a reimagining of the Joker. And I got to work, and I got my 15 seconds of fame in the Arkham scene. I was in the trailer and Todd Phillips was great to me. Oh, maybe I'll be able to come back in a Joker 2 or even one of these Batman villains, but hopefully playing a villain um, or something uh, something of the like. I would love that very much. And I got the opportunity to work with them. And again, he won the Academy Award. And again, as I said in the last uh, program, I felt like I, I played a part of that and I, I contributed to that in some way. But great job, Joaquin Phoenix. And I'd love to see him come in and play the Joker if the Joker is introduced into this... Into this um, this the Batman series um, excellent job again by Robert Patterson and just the whole thing and Jeffrey Wright playing Commissioner Gordon they also seem to get Commissioner Gordon pretty well too very good played by uh, I am so sorry to forget my buddy's name but from the professional he's been in so many movies the fifth element you know we am talking about from the Christian uh, Christian Bale movies uh, Christopher Nolan the Commissioner Gordon there you know what I'm talking about they just played um, Winston Churchill, great actor. You know who I'm talking about. I don't even have to say his name. In fact, I don't have to say his name because you know who I'm talking about. So, and we, we both know. But I did write a couple of them down because I'm going to forget all these names. And also, uh, the movie has made... Uh, we're approaching $800 million. So this movie easily can make a uh, billion dollars easily. But it's broken all sorts of records for... Uh, domestic gross and uh, it's done pretty well uh, worldwide. So, but it's it just it just went out of the gate fantastic and uh, I think it's going to go to HBO Max if I'm correct in a couple of weeks. So maybe they push that date just a little bit to keep it in the theater because it's having a great run and people are enjoying seeing. It. And I got to see it and I really thoroughly enjoyed it. I can't wait to watch it again. And I will leave it at that. But this movie is three hours and it's worth it. I'm glad it is because it just felt great from beginning to end. It's one of the best movies. And I think it should be up for some Academy Awards. It deserves it. It really does because it's a great pound-for-pound -pound movie, a mystery, again, noir movie. Um, and it's it's just great from, from beginning to end, a true Batman movie. And I would put it on the level of the, uh, of the Christopher Nolan movies. Uh, that level, that it was that well done. And Matt Reeves, you did a great job on this. You didn't let us down on this, and you did a fantastic job. I would love to work with you guys as well. I'm sure a lot of other people would too on these these series. But a fantastic job. And supposedly it's going to get some spinoffs. Colin Farrell, they're going to give him a um, series, The Penguin. I don't know if that's going to... Is it HBO Max or one of them? And then they're talking about an Arkham series. So maybe this gentleman who played the Joker will get an actual opportunity to do that if they don't bring him back in the movies. Again, it was what it was. It was interesting scenes to say the least. That at least they were able to bring that character that is so well known, probably the most famous villain uh, in any comics, the Joker. Um, that being said, I also just want to make a quick note of uh, Far From Home. Um, no Way Home. <laughs> I had to say, because the first one was Homecoming, and that's the Spider-Man. It broke $1.8 billion, and it's, it kind of got everything besides the James Bond movie. It seemed to get us out of the pandemic. 
uh, movie wise, and so does this the new Batman movie because people just were not ready to go back to the movies. And they finally seemed like they went back for the James Bond movie, Two Years in the Waiting, with Daniel Craig, and I have yet to see that, but I'm sure it's a pretty good movie. And of course, my light just went out, so I will fix that. Uh, give me a moment, and I'm I'm okay with that. Now we'll fix that light, but that's all right. We can stick to that. I don't mind. I can cut this, in. and we'll just take it from there. I think we we're keeping it all natural. There we go. There's our light back again. So that being said, um, Far From Home turned out to be a pretty good movie, but this is No Way Home. And the main thing that I loved about this movie was I grew to like Tom Holland over there. I mean, he was fine. You know, they cast him for the Avengers movies, a younger... Spider-Man, he does, he's a, a British uh, young gentleman, and he's done a good job. I always liked Tobey Maguire as far as the movies were concerned, and even Andrew Garfield was okay for what it was. But what the great thing about this movie is they bring all these actors back, and the guy who just steals the show and really hits it home, and not that everybody else wasn't doing a good job. Of course, Ben Benedict Cumberbatch comes in there as Doctor Strange, and he's always a good actor. But they brought in William Defoe who just stole the show. He really did. Talk about a villain. Just he, he, he just takes it home playing the Green Goblin. And he's always been one of my favorite actors. They also brought back Al Molino, who did a great job as Dr. Octopus, Jamie Foxx, and several other gentlemen who played the Sandman. Uh, it was nice to see these guys again and great. But of course, Andrew Garfield, uh, was nice to see him again. I think he did a great job. I think he was even up for an Academy Award this year. So he did a nice job to see him again, and they joke a lot about how he was kind of replaced in the midterm, replaced uh, Tobey Maguire, which I think a lot of people really like Tobey Maguire. And they kind of are very lighthearted about it, and they poke some fun at it, but in a good way, and wrap up some of the things that happened there, how he lost his girlfriend there in the movie, and now he had to come to terms with that in the, in the character. Spider-Man, but Tobey Maguire gets to come back, and he, he's kind of low-key and funny in it, but it's nice to see him, and the one, main thing that I find funny, too, is I always was like, wait, Spider-Man did not need a suit. It depends on who did the uh, writing, who the writers were. He never needed a suit. He put the suit on, just like Batman, Batman, you know, or Iron Man. They needed a suit, in a sense, especially Iron Man. I love my buddy Robert Downey Jr., who I've worked with, too, as well, but... They in the Marvel movies, and again, he's made a lot of help, make a lot of extra money for them. Um, they're always referring to Tony Stark, Tony Stark, Tony Stark, which is a little silly because um, Henry Pym was one of the guys out there who created uh, Ultron, and in this one, they have Tony Stark creating him. Um, and Tony Stark creates the suit for Spider-Man in Homecoming. You know, if you need the suit, you, you're, I'm taking the suit away from you. But Spider-Man never needed the suit. He never needed all these. Uh, gadgets. He didn't have to create his own webs. And they joke about that. So Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland's character needed to scientifically create their own webs. But Tobey Maguire was like the old school Spider-Man. He had his own webs come out of his come out of his hands. So he had all the powers. He didn't need the suit. And I rewatched Homecoming recently and I liked it more this time around. There's Michael Keaton in there who was playing the Vulture. Uh, and he did a great job. So that being said, um, very interesting, uh, uh, last but not least, uh, it was, I, I actually enjoyed the movie, and each one seemed to get better, and finally, um, No Way Home. I think they did a good job, very much like Into the Spider-Verse, which was a great cartoon that came out two years ago, a cartoon, uh, with some great names in there, too, as well. But again, the real thing about, um, the real watch for No Way Home is, um, you have, um, if I'm leaving out anybody else there, uh, they, uh, William Defoe really just steals the show. He really does, and that's all due respect because everybody's going to see T uh, Toby Maguire. They're great. And Tom Holland, they all do a good job there. And his cast of characters, his girlfriend and his friend, and they're, they're all good. And they're, they're funny. He calls them Scooby-Doo, um, uh, Doctor Strange, because you, you, and, you and your Scooby-Doo team go discover whatever it is you're looking for. A lot of funny jokes in there. But it's William Defoe that really steals the show here. And, of course, Marissa Tomei, who I think by now you know might have, uh, in the movie, her character, Aunt May, a younger Aunt May, comes into a little bit of uh, a problem when she goes up against um, none other than the Green Goblin played by William Defoe, and that's, that's your icebreaker right there, and that just turns the story around and it goes to another level. That you got to be careful you mess with when you come to those villains, especially William Defoe. Worth a watch. I think everybody has watched it, but really catch the Batman 
that's my recommendation to everybody. Just pound for pound, a great movie. I, I even recommend it more than than the Spider-Man movie. But I like them both. But the 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 Batman is just a all-round great movie, along the lines of the Christopher Nolan, Christian Bale movies. And this, I think, is just as well. And I hope it leads to a lot of sequels. And Christian Varley, please like and subscribe. Enjoy. Thank you for uh, for listening and my review. God bless. Thank you.